and after an eighth child has died from a severe strep A bacterial infection, Dr. Hilary Jones joins us um, as well. Mm. I'm going to go to you, uh, uh, Hilary. Um, look, one of the difficult things here, speaking to friends who've got kids at the age of 10, on the one hand, you know, they don't want to be terrified. On the other hand, they want to know that they're doing uh, the right thing. Sure. You know, in a reasonable way, so we don't terrify people, um, but people have got hold of the facts. How worried should we be or not worried? OK, so right now, every parent will know children at their children's school who have got runny noses, sore throats, swollen glands, rashes. It's very, very common to have those symptoms. When you read in the papers about invasive strep A, we're talking about a rare disease, a rare disease that, whilst it's killed eight children this season, we always see um, these kind of complications um, uh, every year. Uh, we saw four deaths in 2017, fewer during the pandemic years, eight this year, um, partly because immunity has gone down. So it's very, very unusual to see such serious um, illnesses. And we're talking about a rate of 2.3 per 100,000 children. So it's rare. And I think that's, that's really worth stressing. However, it doesn't make it any easier for parents who should be worried about their children. You know, when is a sore throat significant? When should I go and see the doctor? Mm. Especially when it's so difficult to see a doctor. You know, what should they do? And I think the best advice I can give is to be vigilant. Look out for the red flag symptoms, which are severe sore throat with exudation, sort of white spots on the back of the tonsils, the back can of the throat. Can you see that yeah. when, yes. as a parent? Yes, if you, if you ask the, 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 the child to open their mouth wide, say, ah, maybe use the, the end of a spoon to depress mm. the tongue slightly, which can cause a gag, gag reflex, you've so got to be careful, but you can see that white exudate on the tonsils at the back of the throat. Look for large glands in the uh, front of the neck, mm. A fever is always going to occur with strep A infection. And sometimes this rash, the scar scarlet fever rash, which yeah. is small red bumps which feel like sandpaper. And on brown and dark skin, uh, you, you would just feel that sandpapery feel. You won't see the you, you talked about not being able to see uh, a doctor. What happens, and we're talking about sharp elbows in due course and people who are in debt, uh, and often it's the case that people say, sorry, I can't see you, and that's the end of the phone call. What should they say to a doctor that says, we don't have an appointment, mm. or they phone 111? Mm. Um, what's the answer to that? I, I think it's be assertive and say, look, I'm very worried about my child because I'm worried about this uh, uh, streptococcal infection. Um, my child's got a fever. Explain what the symptoms are. Has your child got a fever? Um, my child needs to be seen. If you can't get that GP appointment, if 111 can't phone you back within a few hours and you're worried, then you only have one alternative, and that's to go to a &E. And I wish I didn't have to say that. I wish GP services were better resourced. Uh, the other part of the news today is that 30 million people uh, couldn't get to see their GP um, in October. Um, is that the right figure? 35 million, 35. Uh, sorry, were, were unable. Um, but GPs saw 30 million appointments in October. So GPs are working very hard. There just aren't enough of them. Um, to see everybody that needs to be seen. Have we got enough antibiotics? I mean, we are now hearing that some schools are going to induce prophylactic antibiotics, yeah. just yeah. giving whole year groups antibiotics. If, there's, if there are cases, if there's an outbreak in a primary school, um, uh, health protection uh, agencies will uh, consider using prophylactic antibiotics for that year group, even if someone hasn't got symptoms. This is to reduce um, possible spread mm. uh, in asymptomatic carriers and it, amongst those people who've already got um, the infection diagnosed. Two uh, more specific questions. You describe symptoms which are very akin to tonsillitis. Mm. Um, do, does it... If you, have, if you have had your tonsils removed, which some children have, does that make any difference? No. Uh, and the other thing is, if you are allergic to penicillin, penicillin, does that... What right. do you do then? Good questions. So, so the tonsils are just one part of a ring of lymphatic tissue around the back of the throat. So just having your tonsils removed, which is the first line of defence, doesn't mean to say that you can't get streptococcal infection in does the, it make in the it back worse, of the throat. Or you can still it... get sore throats without yeah. tonsils. But does it, if your tonsils are removed, are you removing the first line of defence? To some extent, you are, which is why doctors try and leave tonsils in these mm -hmm. days as much as possible. But um, you've still got layers of defence. The second um, uh, answer is that um, a certain proportion of people are allergic to penicillin V. 
but there are alternatives okay. for those people, such as erythromycin, that you'd use uh, as an alternative, just as effective. Okay. Dr. Hillary, thanks very much indeed.